MOSFETs are really interesting solid-state devices. I have a couple of experiments that I think shows the characteristics of a MOSFET and also the advantage of using a MOSFET. And the acronym MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. I have made a simple drawing of what makes up a MOSFET. And we start with a silicon substrate, which is doped either P material or N material. And then we're going to have two more regions, and they're also doped P or N material. But the substrate and those regions, those two regions, are always opposite. In other words, if the substrate is P doped, those two regions are N doped material. And then we're going to have an insulator and a metal conductor on top of that. And it is going to be known as the gate. This is what controls the MOSFET. In other words, the signal is going to be applied to the gate. The region on the left is going to be known as the source, and the region on the right is going to be known as the drain. And that insulator, quite often what is used is silicon dioxide, otherwise known as glass. The area just below the gate and between the source and the drain is known as the channel. And there are two types of MOSFETs. This one is the P-channel MOSFET. And the one that I'm going to be using is the N-channel MOSFET. And here is the diagram for a N-channel MOSFET. For the first experiment, I'm going to use my Simpson 260 meter and these two transistors. I'm going to compare the MOSFET, which is the larger transistor on the left, with the smaller junction transistor. It's an NPN transistor on the right. And I'm going to use that screwdriver. I'm going to put uh, my finger on the shaft, the metal shaft of that screwdriver, and use myself as a signal source. Now here's an overhead view of this setup. And we have a N-channel MOSFET and a NPN junction transistor. And you can see where the leads are. The resistors are only there to supply me easy access to the base of the NPN transistor and the gate of the MOSFET. The Simpson meter is going to be set at R times 10,000 and this is how I'm going to connect the meter to the NPN transistor and then to the N-channel MOSFET transistor. Okay, I'm going to hook up the Simpson meter. That's the E connection. And here is the C connection. And 
when I touch the base we do get the transistor to conduct okay now I'm going to go over to the MOSFET Now there's some high impedance. See if I can't discharge that. Now that time I left a charge on the gate. That's some very, very high impedance. That charge that I put on the gate of the MOSFET will stay there a long time because of the glass insulation. This next experiment will show the advantage of a high impedance device over a low impedance device. And I'm going to be using two meters and my signal source is going to be a one and a half volt battery. Okay, I'm going to start with the Simpson and touch the source here. And the meter reads a little over one and a half volts. I'm going to do the same for the high impedance meter. And it reads the same, a little over one and a half volts. Now we're going to lower the signal a little bit by adding some impedance or resistance and now the low impedance meter reads way less than one and a half volts now here's the high impedance meter it still reads the same. So the high impedance device does not load down the signal you're trying to work with. The MOSFET is a very interesting solid-state device. And I hope these two experiments showed the characteristics and the advantages of a MOSFET transistor.